When you start with programming, there are so many things you have to learn at once, it is inevitable that you pick up a few bad habits here and there. And that is fine. The most important thing is that you got started. And you did. You are creating your first programs, but now want to get more productive. And for that, you have to break up with bad habits. But how do you know if you have bad habits? Well, in this video, you will see the top 5 of bad habits I see during my Python beginners course. At number 1. Matching brackets. After a few hours in my course, I start explaining f-strings. The goal is to insert variables in strings. Here is a simple example. But pretty soon, things get more complicated. I want the students to insert more variables. So they start typing and sooner or later they forget to type brackets here and there. Now they have to add them later. Once that happens, the code editor will not match your brackets automatically or it will do it in the wrong place. You now have to manually check the brackets you opened and closed. And this can get complicated. Even the pros struggle with long lines with many brackets. Now, of course, eventually you can fix this, but I have a much simpler advice. You can start by deleting parts of the line until the code editor shows no more errors. And if that does not fix your problem, just delete the complete line and start over. Yes, I know, it hurts to delete code, but if you see one line of code with many errors in it, as a beginner, you are way better off by getting rid of it and start over. Each time you start over, you get more routine and eventually you have enough experience to fix these problems without starting over. To prevent the problem from happening at all, I always do this. If I need to insert two variables in an f-string, I first focus on all brackets and quotes like this. This way I know all brackets are properly opened and closed and now I can take the time to think what goes where. The second tip I have is for non-English speakers and they are going to hate me for it. I teach at a school in Berlin and most of my students learned how to work with computers in German. They search online in German, they type German and have their computers set up in German. And now they have to work with programs that are in English. The first thing they ask me is how to set up Visual Studio Code in German. Now, even if that would be possible, I tell them to keep it in English. I can tell you this causes some friction. Because now, they not only have to learn programming, but also the English words for files, folders, special characters, loops, variables, etc. And you know what? You just have to deal with it. Don't get mad at me, it is the year 2024 and you want to learn how to program. The world of developers is in English. Just bite the bullet and as soon as you learn more English, you notice it will help you not only with programming, but with many other things. And there are so many ways to do this for free. Switch your computer and phone to English. Read your favorite books again in English. And my personal favorite tip, watch American movies in English and turn on the subtitles. Bad habit number three, typing too much code without testing in between. There are many situations where you have to finish your code before you can test it. But there are also many situations where it is not. The first thing you can do is to keep an eye on the code editor during typing. These lines indicate problems in the code. If this happens, do not continue. Hoping these problems will go away automatically is not a good strategy. If you have no clue what goes wrong, my first tip applies. Delete the line and start over.
Spotting typing errors in the beginning is very hard and starting over will give you extra routine. Another thing you can do is split up calculations over multiple lines. You can now type part of the calculation, print the result and execute the program. This way you can check exactly where things go wrong instead of having to search through big chunks of code. And this brings me to bad habit number 4. Putting two programs in one script. Beginners have to learn many things at once. Create a code file, learn Python syntax, understand the problem they want to solve, execute the code, read the output. This is not easy. Believe me, I know. Once the beginner has successfully finished an assignment, they need to start with a blank slate. But this comes with a price. They have to create a new file and come up with a file name. Since this is not a routine for the beginner yet, they sometimes choose another route. Instead of creating a new file, they choose to type the next assignment under the existing code. Now experienced programmers will say, of course, that is a bad idea. But if you are a beginner, I bet you have done this because I see it happen in my beginner's course a lot. And what exactly is the problem with this? Well, what if you did something in program 1 that influences something here in program 2? How will you know where the problem is? If you do not mix programs, you do not have this problem. So what do you do? If you already combined two programs into one script, go to the menu, create a new file and move half of the code to the new file. Which brings me to another tip I have for you. Make sure to pick a good file name. When you come back to your code after one month, you will have no idea what exercise1.py does. But it is clear what findsmallestnumber.py does. But some creative beginners have found another way to make two programs in one script work, which brings me to the last bad habit in the list. Commenting out code. Once students have learned that comments are not executed by Python, they pretty soon figure out that they can also comment out large portions of the code. Comparing this code to an assignment or example is very hard. Even if code is commented out, it is still distracting. And if you come back to this code after one month, you have no idea why it was commented out. To state the obvious, comments are for writing comments, not for disabling code. So, what do you do? When you are finished with a program, remove commented out lines of code. I hope these tips helped you and to get more tips and tricks for beginner programmers, check out this playlist.